Running, free. Swimming, free. Toe wrestling, also free. Formula One, ha! <laughs> you know. F1 is the most expensive sport in the world and that isn't gonna change. But a sport where billionaires throw away money for fun? How do the little guys even have a chance at winning? This is me getting you grid ready on the F1 cost cap. F1 has always been about paying to win. It's like the ultimate microtransactions playground. It's like if Sony got a hold of Gran Turismo. Oh my god. In 2019, Mercedes spent almost 400 million of the King's pounds on making sure they won the season. Ferrari spent 371 million, Red Bull 357 million. But a couple of years later in 2021, it was a huge change of story. F1 is trying to become more sustainable, and that's not only from an environmental point of view, but an economical one too. <laughs> so while the sport is trying to be carbon neutral by 2030, one other big step was to bring in a cap on costs, or a cost cap as we now know it. Towards the end of the 2000s, the FIA president at the time, Max Mosley, had his sights set on a cost cap, but it's fair to say his sights were a little too low. He lobbied for a cap of just $50 million, and this was quickly quashed by the bigger teams who thought they'd lose their competitiveness and, let's face it, weren't worrying about money. I'm really rich. I'll show you that in a second. These guys were the biggest in the business. If it meant that they weren't gonna be competing with little Timmy and a small team of engineers working out of a shed, that didn't bother them in the slightest. Mosley left in 2009, and it wasn't until almost 10 years later that the subject was brought up again. To be frank, around the end of the 2010s, even the bigger teams were feeling under pressure to spend more and more. They each needed to win. But if Mercedes was spending more, Red Bull had to, and then Ferrari had to spend more, and Aston Martin was catching up, and it just had to stop. So eventually, there was a collective sigh of relief as F1 introduced the idea of a $175 million cost cap for 2020. Yeah, boy. A financial lockdown. Bigger than anything we'd ever seen turned into a literal lockdown as COVID dominated headlines. And this ruined everything. The season was postponed because of the virus and because of this, only lasted 17 races. The next year in 2021, the figure fell to just $145 million, with it being planned to fall $5 million each year for the next two years after that. But what is this cap anyway? Simply put, it's a monetary limit that each team can spend on their F1 season. Some teams like Mercedes, Red Bull, etc. have mega budgets. They have money literally falling out of their ass, Bruh. making it hard for the not so big spenders to catch up on the track. This cap, it's all about leveling that playing field, making sure that there are enough cars on the grid and making sure that the fastest sprockets don't come from the deepest pockets. <laughs> <laughs> so what goes under this cap? Pretty much everything. All the parts on the car, everything needed to run the car, the majority of the team's personnel, garage equipment, spare parts, transport costs, and basically everything in between. It's actually easier to tell you what's not included in the cap. Driver salaries. The salaries of the three highest paid employees, like the team principal, marketing, sick, maternity and paternity pay, and medical benefits that employees get through the team. Because they're nice like that. Accounts are kept throughout the year, and after each season, teams have until March 31st to give in all of their finances. And as you'd expect, it is a bitch of a job for the FIA to get everything ticked off. I did accountancy at uni. I don't miss it. Rules are meant to be broken, right? Wrong! This is F1, you just can't blast through the rules like a Red Bull in a china shop. If a team overspends, Penalties will be dished out, but that's not before a potential trial. If a team is thought to have breached the cost cap, they have to accept a breach agreement. It's like pleading guilty in the courts. If they don't do this, then the case is sent to a panel of six to 12 people elected, <coughs> six to 12 people elected by the FIA General Assembly. They'll comb through the details, talk to witnesses, and make a decision. 
The punishments? Well, that depends what kind of breach a team made. There are three types. The first is just a procedural breach, which includes not handing in your homework on time or giving inaccurate information, which will result in a financial penalty. A minor overspend, which is anything under 5% over the cost cap, can be either a financial penalty or a sporting penalty. Let's talk about Red Bull. In 2020, they went over the cost cap by $550,000 after a tax credit. This doesn't sound like that much, but as noted by Ferrari chief Fred Vasseur, about $10 million of their budget goes into car development. So half a million is actually a lot of dough. Red Bull received a $7 million fine as well as a 10% reduction in wind tunnel time. That's gotta hurt! <laughs> Not that it's changed anything at all. <laughs> <Got he. laughs> a major overspend, anything over 5%, and F1 literally throws lightning bolts at your children. Think race exclusions, point deductions, heavy fines, and even being booted from the championship itself. Oh my God! So, has the cap worked? Well, with Red Bull safely winning every race so far this season, Max Verstappen breaking every single record, including Sebastian Vettel's record of nine consecutive wins, it's maybe safe to say that the cost cap hasn't stopped the single team dominance that F1 set out to stop. The other issue is that some teams are now struggling to pay for staff or pay wages that the staff deserve. And this means that the sport could lose some of the best minds it has because they could simply be paid more elsewhere. But the most important issue is how complicated it is. Like everything in F1, there are loopholes. Expenses can be hidden under marketing. And what about Mercedes, Aston Martin, Alpine, and Red Bull who have road cars? Could development for these road cars be used to better their F1 teams? I don't know, maybe. The cost cap is still very new and there is a lot of work to be done, but at least now you're grid ready. What do you think? Do you think the cost cap is helping the balance on the grid? Do you want to see harsher penalties on teams that go over it? What do you think of Red Bull's punishment? Let me know down in the comments. We're always wanting to hear what you guys think. Subscribe, like, click the notification bell, all this kind of stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I'm Alex, by the way. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at AlexDoesF1. I post sometimes.